Hey, yeah, Mamalia and Gabba Buliago. Greetings, friends, and good morning. My name is Lenny Waters. Uh, Camilla Roman, come from Tumalar Mission Station. Just want to um, speak a little bit about sort of um, Reconciliation Week and what it means to me. Reconciliation Week. Uh, coming from the old mission days, we've been through that stolen generation stage and many other stages as well. But I want to wind it forward a little bit to sort of um, go a little bit along with the theme today. And this time of year is a very important time of year for us mob. It's important because of uh, two major reasons. One is that this time of year, starting at the beginning of March or autumn, all the dinner one, all the emus, will start to gather. They gather to select their mates, do their dance, prepare their nest, to lay their eggs, then all through the months up until spring, September. Then the chicks hatch, and then they will go off with their parents to learn how to be emus. In this time of year, you'll see a lot of young emus standing around the paddock. The adults are already gone, and they've gone to nest. But last season's emus, they won't mate. They won't mate until the following season. But the important thing about, I suppose, the journey of the emu or the dinner one during this period of time, over the next few months, is that something else happens. Whether you think it's coincidence, I think it's a lot more deeper and more spiritual thing. But the emu in the sky will appear at the same time as the adults gather to start their breeding season. And the emu in the sky will follow the emus on the ground over that period of time. And after all the chicks have hatched and the emu has left the water hole, the emu in the sky will also disappear. And this happens year after year. It's been happening for a millennia. And to me, it signifies a deep connection that we have, not only with the earth, but with the sky. And there's a lot more to it, because the story of these two are the story of us. It's interesting to see the way that they interact, showing the way for the way that we should be interacting. Because sometimes we get too full of material stuff. We forget about our culture, we forget about our connections to country, our roles and responsibilities, and also the stories in the sky. And use this time to sort of reflect and maybe get an interest to learn a little bit more about not only the dinner one or the emu and their journey on the ground, but also in the heavens. But think of a lot of other things that throughout the year are very significant to our culture. But go beyond in Noya, Yamanai. Come run now, I don't want to Maroon, come on, Yanalaya. That just means welcome all your mob, welcome to the country. This is the strong lands of the Camilleroy. Go well and be safe here. And by Miguel, Ganagara, Yurai, Kile, Miri, and Theo Nelaboga Mobi. Bami, you want to bami? Bami, you want to And that's just giving praise to the Creator for the heavens, the sun, the moon, the stars, and this beautiful earth. He sees and hears everything. He is who he says he is, and he is good. Da da. The great father. You know about my bra, you know about my bra. Walk with him, go with him. And thank you very much for inviting me to do your welcome today. Okay, um, well, I'm uh, Mark Atkins. Uh, uh, I've been here in Tamworth, Tamworth now 30 odd years. Um, originally from born and bred in uh, Albany, which is uh, Noongar country. My uh, journey, um, just quickly, I suppose, I, I, uh, I was a drummer back in the, in the 70s playing in um, rock and roll bands, if you like. Um, and then uh, I suppose for the nature of the industry and the rest of it, I had to have a bit of a break. So um, I went up north and um, uh, uh, one of my uncles taught me to play. Um, uh, well, what did you do? We, we, we say we call it a gulumbung from that way. Anyway, um, so uh, I come to, um, um, well, we travelled a bit in the bus, me, the missus, the dog and the kids, 
they were just babies then, you know, just travelling around looking for a place to camp, we'll sort of live anyway. And uh, I remember my sister telling, talking about Tamworth, so I thought we'd come through here. Anyway, cut a long story short, I'm, I'm here now. Um, uh, it was back in the, um, would have been 88, 89. Uh, and like I said, I, I got away from the rock and roll playing, in, uh, playing that scene for a while, because I had to. Um, and for whatever reason, for some reason, um, Didgeridoo took over for me. And uh, um, since then, I, I spent nearly 30 years um, uh, traveling, the, um, traveling the planet. Uh, it was a sound. It was a sound, and 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 I'd never really heard anybody um, um, playing it. So there was another fella um, that I'd seen on um, that was back in the seventies, um, early eighties, um, uh, playing digital on a show called uh, Four Corners, and that was um, who we ended up being mates. Um, Charlie McMahon. He was um, midnight midnight oil stitch player. So, who I got to work with, all the different members from there. And, um, yeah, uh, and he, he was taken into a more of a contemporary sort of thing. And I was learning the sort of more, sort of bit of the traditional style and that. And then, and you know, I'd get into trouble uh, here and there, you know, because you, you had to have uh, permission, there was this and that protocol, um, which I'd break a few, so. And, and I just said to my uncle one day, I said, well, you know, like, um, what can I do, you know? And he said, just change it, boy, just change it. So I, so I thought about it, I did, and I thought, well, you know, like, I was a drummer, you know, so. So, and uh, I sort of took that style of playing um, from what my uncle was teaching me to um, uh, a more of a contemporary style and more of a um, percussive, um, rhythmic sort of style. So, you know, um, and uh, in them days, uh, a lot of people weren't sort of doing that, or, you know, all, all, all people heard really basically was, um, um, you know, the traditional style. It was always, oh, well, that's a, you know, black fella's instrument, black fella's style. That's it, you know. I wanted to take that all around the world, that sound and that thing, you know. So, and I was just one of them, but uh, um, probably. Uh, only the one left out of, you know, because I was the youngest then, you know, I'm getting on now, but um, uh, I, I changed it. I did what he said, that, that particular uh, style and, you know, stopped being in trouble and that and, and invented my own sort of um, groove. But, and just travelling the world, um, uh, playing with all sorts of, um, you know, playing in concert halls to um, rock and roll venues to, Celtic, I mean, all sorts of styles and genres of um, music. And which was great because, um, you know, I never stopped learning. I'd come to Tamworth and I was having a bit of a break. I'm working here now as a, um, uh, an Aboriginal, Aboriginal youth mentor. Well, that's what it started off, but it's a lot of things I do now. And um, I work um, here. And the kids and that, um, people that are learning, it's not just kids, it's um, uh, a lot of elder people people as well, anywhere from, you know, uh, 7 to 80, um, it's an age group that I, that I work in, um, and they come here, so they're sort of um, like a halfway place as well, um, amongst other things, you know, workshop, um, they're just a place to sit and uh, listen and talk, tell stories, uh, the mates say you're always telling stories, yeah, okay, um, but yeah, it's just a good place to sit and, uh, and, and as you can see, work. Uh, um, for me, it, it, it's it's like this thing now that I, that I'm doing here, and and like there's there's not just going to be um, um, Aboriginal people here. That whole thing is is about um, a, a coming together and a, and a, and an understanding and and, and, and the knowledge um, as well. The beginning of the, the whole thing, the understanding and working together, comes through reconciliation, and that's what I love about this because and introducing that into um, uh, having young kids and that around too. They get to learn and understand um, all of that as well. Uh, when I sit there talking about the digs and some of the stories and things like that will come out. So to me, um, that's all 
reconciliation because they're learning those things from Aboriginal people, you know. It's an understanding, you know, where we are. Uh, working with the kids in that, um, uh, it, it, it's bringing them together, you know, like, um, um, and, and, and that's one thing, because what I try and do, you know, uh, there was times where they'd, they'd come in and then and they'd, they'd start working and they'd be on their phones and I'd have a little yarn to them about their phones, you know. Um, anyway, so we sorted that out. And instead of the phone, it's getting them to talk to each other, putting them in teams, groups, so they had something to work on. And it doesn't matter how simple it was, I'd have them working on, well, I want this group here to, to play this and this group to play that and you to play that. So it was like, well, you know, they weren't going to let anybody down, not their little group, but a little team. So that when they did come together at the end of the day or the end of the session, um, they'd have something to play. And I say, you fellas all know what's and what, what needs to be worked on and that. To do that, to achieve that, you're going to have to work together. You know? uh, I'm Graham Kelly. I'm a business partner for Aboriginal Cultural Engagement for local land services. A day like today is really important, you know, um, Reconciliation Week and having the opportunity for local land services to work to, with uh, community and the opportunity for non-Indigenous staff, um, Indigenous LLS staff and community, um, that's what reconciliation is all about, I think, is having that opportunity to come together and uh, learn from each other, um, have a yarn, talk about things that, um, you know, what culture means to both sides, you know, we can have all those sort of conversations and being able to work together and learn about what opportunities there might be um, in the future with, you know, bringing young fellas along and seeing what we do at, at local land services and how we, in, you know, engage with community and but Reconciliation Week in itself, it's, it's, it's a really big thing for Aboriginal communities to, to see the wider community um, coming to work with us and, and to learn our story and learn about past histories and you know, the history of dispossession and all those things that were negative, the loss of culture, uh, all those sorts of things. So a day like today with a men's workshop and we're learning to uh, make didgeridoos and tools and, and share those skills with the young people. Um, it, it's really significant, I think, and, and, and important that we do this sort of, sort of work and hold these days. Yeah, so uh, James Hutchinson-Smith, General Manager, Northwest Local Land Services. Yeah, look, uh, this event and, and others like them across the region are really, really important. Uh, it gives us, uh, Local Land Service and, and all our staff, an opportunity to uh, stop and, uh, and think, and, uh, but not just talk about what we should be doing during Reconciliation uh, Week, but uh, also doing. And because uh, really it's, it's actions are more important than words and uh, getting together with people from community, uh, people with, uh, with lots of knowledge about traditional practice and sitting down and, and taking part uh, of that traditional practice with them is, is really, really important to us. And uh, so, yeah, I, I value these days and, and all our team do. It gives all of us an opportunity to focus on what's important. And uh, so, you know, with, when you live in regional uh, New South Wales, and especially the last couple of years we've had, you know, where our focus uh, always gets drawn towards everything from drought to locusts to floods. You know, we've, we've also had COVID and a few other things that have kept us remote from each other. And uh, it's really important that we, we plan these uh, events for this week uh, so that we, we take time uh, and, and, and focus on, on, on those equally important things to help uh, bring us together as, as a community. Oh, what I've gotten out of it is there's a, there's a really good range of, uh, of age and experience and also representation across the community from Northwest Local Land Services. We've got people from across all the different portfolios of the organisation, but also uh, across the community, we've got people with, with incredible knowledge and practical skills, cultural skills. We've also got some uh, young Aboriginal men here as well uh, that, are, that are picking up the tools uh, for the first time and, and crafting uh, yeah, traditional products. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. My name is Lachlan Power, and I will be representing the Gomorrah Culture Academy. It's Cameron Smith. Um, I'm representing the Gomorrah Culture Academy.
more than a word means to me that we should talk more about our culture in schools and stuff and like get younger people to know about it and what it is and what it means to them and to me and um means more to me um that we have to remember the past too and um try and like help our younger generations in the future and that um today is real special to me because I'm learning more like more skills um, about my culture and learning about my culture of my uh, like uncles and that and it's good to um, meet new people in the community. Oh, I mean just getting together and like you know meeting new people and learn new things about the Didge and get to see people I haven't seen in a while and meet some of the alumni from the Culture Academy and just have a good day. Um, today uh, um, I enjoyed uh, meeting new people and um, learning different ways how to um, make the yidiki and um, talking to the younger followers in the academy. I haven't really caught up with them yet so it's good. Yama, it's, um, oh, my name's Mona Fernando Munro. Um, I am a Gamilaroi woman and I've been living here in Maori now for about 40 years. I'm Pippa Jones, I work with Northwest Local Land Services in the Natural Resource Management Team. My name's Rebecca McCauley and I'm the Executive Assistant to James Hutchinson-Smith uh, here at Local Land Services. Yeah, Leonie Coleman, Local Land Services. I'm the Senior Project Officer um, with the Natural Resource Management Team based here in beautiful Moree. Uh, Reconciliation Week means to me for all of our community and our Aboriginal community as well. Um, just to be recognised as being Aboriginal and yeah, just uh, there for the future of our kids, yeah. Reconciliation Week to me means about caring, um, caring for the past and also understanding, understanding of the past and looking forward to the future. And to do that, we need to share stories about what's happened um, in the past and also look forward to what's happening in the future. Um, and what we've been doing today is part of that in sharing stories with the elders um, and aunties, um, learning how to basket weave and also about um, bush tucker, which has been um, fantastic uh, learning and sharing of knowledge and culture. So it's really about that coming together now and, and how we move forward. Reconciliation Week is important for all Australians. I think we, it's about sharing, it's about understanding listening and learning and respecting each other's cultures uh, and I think it's about taking opportunities like we've had today to learn about things like bush tucker and weaving which we otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, reconciliation to me is about learning and the opportunity to uh, dive into the cultural experience and um, really absorb some of the activities and, um, and the events. Events like today are important, very important because um, you've got um, Kerry which is doing the bush tucker which is passed down um, from generation and it's all done from natural, um, natural products um, that are found on the riverbank and then um, with my weaving um, you also with the lamandra grass which is 
what we use um, to make our baskets, which we use, um, you know, years and years ago um, to make up uh, to make up the baskets for carrying uh, their food, which they, the Aboriginal people would collect on the river. Yeah. Yeah. Events like today are incredibly important to keep culture alive and to share culture um, with Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. Um, we're all in this together and it's about how we can um, look to our future with um, positivity and what we've learnt here today through um, what Kerry's doing with her bush tucker is, is a really exciting opportunity um, for local businesses to, um, to embrace. Events like today are really important part of um, helping us as members of the community understand local Aboriginal and Indigenous culture and some of the history behind that. It's been really um, exciting to learn about some of the history around the Moree region and how the weaving and the bush tucker um, was used in the past. Uh, today was fantastic and it was a great opportunity to um, not only be with the women in my organisation but the women local here today uh, from the Aboriginal um, organisations. Um, we've had Mona and Kerry and Auntie Dee and another lady from Pius and um, not only just hearing what they do but just getting the opportunity to um, hang out with them and have a chat and listen to their stories and listen to my colleagues. My journey started when I was at, I was, uh, I was doing part-time work for a man named Andrew Amos and his family on, at the vineyard, Woolaway Wines. And, um, you know, two hours of my time, once a week, um, and turned into three hours. And I really loved to get it in my hands, um, growing things. I, I was always outdoors. You know, I held a hoe since I was 14 and I chipped in the fields 20 years. Uh, Maury, Mung and I, you know, you name it. Um, and I thought, well, in that time I went and got a couple of certificates up my sleeve. I didn't know anything about computer, so I thought, well, I'll go and do business cert two and um, I'll accomplish that. And then Business Cert 3, Kerry, want me to sign you up while I just finish that certificate off. Oh, well, may as well go again, I'll go and get Certificate 3. Sign my name, put my name there. And then I got Business Cert 3. And I was so happy. Oh, I'm going to get a business job now, I know I am. <laughs> and so, um, with my certificates, I um, went around town, you know, like, um, you know, see if they had any work. And, um, uh, everyone was too comfortable sitting in there. There was nothing happening. So, uh, with the ALS, Judy Duncan gave me some volunteer work there. I said, that's a start. Um, so, that went on for like two months, I think. Um, so, and I was thinking I really need to get paid work. Um, so, I thought, well, I went back to cleaning motels, which was another job that I did. And I did. 
And then got the native tourist out there and um, so I'm pushing my little trolley and my cleaner trolley and I was going up to uh, approaching a few ladies that I cleaned their room. They come over for the pool. Um, they were different nationalities, one Italian lady. And as I was getting closer, she goes, Oh, Keddy, 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 um, no clean today, no clean. You come sit, come sit. It's a radio. And I sat down with her and I, she goes, Ah, we here, we here for two weeks for pool and we a bit bored. Um, you know where koala? I said, Oh, all right, koala. Mm, yeah, I know where there's a koala. And um, so the other guy was listening and said, what about a kangaroo? I said, yep, yeah, I know where there's a kangaroo. And so, um, yeah, I thought, well, I went and done horticultural, I well, pretty much learned all my weeds on the cotton paddy. And then I went and learnt, um, that's when I thought, well, I'll go and do another course. And that's when I went, met Paul Motson. Um, a uh, bush tucker, nursery owner. Just looking at nature itself, it saves everything. And um, the people, you get to meet people and, and knowledge, share knowledge and um, show them, you know, my country, my home. And um, yeah, it's been really good. They like it and it makes me happy knowing that they like it. I do it all. I do, yeah, I do it all. And I just do it. It's become my life livelihood. Like, I, I love it. I, I started Yinama last year in September. And since then I had about five, six tours. And um, uh, consultations, I had about four consultations. I've actually done work for the Inland Rail. I did do Aboriginal site work. Um, that was another certificate that I had, and I've done the site work out in Terry Eye twice. Um, so uh, yeah, so um, and then went to work for the Inland Rail. So I was, they was happy to have me there because they no one didn't know knew about bush tucker, and I was happy to just walk along. And, yeah. Oh, look there, you know, the lady will write it down. And, <laughs> So when it come around again, her name is Marika Lowe, she's a lovely lady. She rang me up, she goes, Kerry, um, you reckon you have time to come out and, you know, uh, you know, do some site work? And I just I said, I'd love to on them days. Um, I can do Thursday or Friday, but I'm busy with the, the uni now with the native brains. Oh, but we want you. That's how she went. <laughs> My mark, no. And I thought, well... Well, I'll get time, I'll catch up with her again. Just really want to do something. But I, I end up going on to, I see an opportunity. That maybe it was meant to be. So, and then I seen it. And um, one lady said to me, Kerry, you sure did found your calling, you know? And I went home and I thought about it. And I come back and I thought, this is just not my calling. This is everyone's calling. This is your calling too, as an Aboriginal woman. It's very, very important to neighbours. Mm.